Well, 15. Frédéric Basile was one of the impressionists right there from the start, although he started by studying medicine. And as a matter of fact, when Monet was painting in the forest of Fontainebleau, Barbie's on paintings, a very bad accident happened. There was a German hammer thrower who was practicing, and, and Monet received on his leg the hammer. <laughs> and so uh, Basil uh, took care of him and did a very good job. Here, this is Basil's studio on the Rue Contamine. And I'm putting that uh, painting in number 15 position because it shows something about the way the Impressionists work. First of all, let me make the introductions. At the uh, easel, with a paintbrush in hand, you have Edouard Manet. Uh, behind Manet, you have Monet. Uh, standing next to the easel, the tall guy is Basile. Uh, on the stair, you have Zola, and he's looking down at Honoir, and then you have Met on the other side. Now, all these artists work together. The interaction between the Impressionists is one of the key elements of the way they created Impressionism. Uh, for or detail, if you look at Manet, uh, the painting was painted by Basile, but Manet did the head of Basile. So it's a collaboration, as they did a lot of collaborative, not works, but uh, collaborations on the way they created the Impressionism. Now, Basile was a very nice guy, great guy. Unfortunately, he died at age 29. He was killed in the war of 1870. During that period of time, the French uniforms were a bright red. Basile was very tall. In the forest where he was killed, everything was green. So it was the perfect target. Uh, Basile was very kind, and he had some money from his family, and they were from Montpellier, and they sent him uh, money regularly. And so he would share with his friends. Yeah, very often his friends would not have a studio. They would uh, share uh, Basile's studio. They did not have enough to eat. He would feed them. So he was a great, a great guy all around. Did not have to go to the war. He volunteered. I'm just curious, you mentioned that uh, one of them, he got money from his family. What, are they, what was the economic background of, of the rest of the career? Uh, mostly from the, the, the families? Money, money and money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, money did not have money. Honoua <laughs> uh, was from a very simple background and they did not have money at all. Uh, money and Honoua at one point almost died of starvation. Uh, Sisley, his parents had been rich, but they were ruined by the Franco Prussian War. And so he experienced continual poverty throughout his life. Uh, Pissarro struggled for years and years and years. So, uh, and then you have, and as we will see, Caibot who had money, and Bert Maurice who had money as well. Talking about Caibot, here he is in number 14 position. And Gustave Caibot was a very interesting guy. He was a very wealthy naval engineer. But he also, or can you go back for a second? Uh, he was also someone who went to the Beaux Arts and studied at the Beaux Arts. So he, he was not just an amateur, he was someone who had learned. You have a portrait of Caibot by Renoir on the left and a self portrait of Caibot on the right. And the next one. And then you have a spectacular painting by Caibot in that show. It's absolutely spectacular. Uh, it's not totally an Impressionist painting. Well, it belonged to the group of Degas, uh, while you had the group of Monet on the other side. Uh, you have the technique, which is a traditional technique in some ways. You have also uh, an interest in composition that is developed over many studies, as Degas did. Monet would sit in front of his landscape and painting all at once. There were no studies, it was just Right there. Uh, he did lots of studies for this painting and many of his other paintings. Everything was carefully planned. Now, what is modern about it, subject matter, floor scrapers. No Greeks, no Romans here either. <laughs> and you have also the very interesting point of view, à la Dugas. 
uh, you have also the very uh, great interest in light and the effects of light. Uh, he had a little bit of a problem with the, the arms. They are a bit rubbery. And from time to time when he had a problem, he would call in Renoir, and Renoir would, would show up. And Renoir would make some uh, corrections and changes, and then would sign, but would sign Kaipot. So there would be two signatures on the painting, Kaipot by Renoir and Kaipot by Kaipot. <laughs> Now, this guy is also extremely important in terms of the French collections. He had a lot of money, and he bought the works that his friends could not sell. And in the process, put together an absolutely amazing collection, which, at his death, and he died young, in his 40s, he willed to the Louvre. It was rejected three times. Finally, there was an outcry led by Renoir, and the collection was finally accepted. And that's the basis of the collection of the Musée d'Orsay. With that, that collection from Caillebotte, the Musée d'Orsay would have a very so so collection of Impressionist works. Mm. Caillebotte collection made the whole difference, all world of difference. The next one. At number 13 position, we have an American, uh -huh. James Whistler. And the next one, a spectacular painting. What's the name of the painting? It's his mother. Well, it's his mother, but that's not the name of the painting. Portrait of the artist's mother. No, no, no arrangement in black and white, and, and black and gray, number one. Because it's all about taunt. If you look at that painting, it might not look as spectacular as you might expect, even though it's quite large. But it's all about the harmony of the tones. There is also a great composition, uh, the asymmetrical balance with the mother on one side and everything else in the painting uh, leading you to the left side of the painting. But the harmony of the tones is absolutely remarkable. It's almost like a musical composition. As a matter of fact, if you look at the curtain, uh, the design on the curtain almost looked like notes of music. And that is what he did. Uh, this is, by the way, the most famous American painting, not in America. <laughs> <laughs> the next one. At number 12 position, we have a painting by Claude Monet. Now, this is an interesting painting. Well, go ahead. This is an interesting painting, which is not totally impressionistic in the technique, the brushwork. It was painted early on in 68, 69, and so at that time the brushwork was not quite uh, what it will become. And we will see that later on, uh, the, how the, the brushwork evolves. Now the impressionists love to paint snow scenes, because snow is a marvelous surface. What's the color of snow? White. It's blue, white. It's a reflective surface. So as a reflective surface, it picks up all the colors of the environment. Now, when you look at that painting in person, it's much more obvious, all the delicate tones that, that you have. Uh, the impression is painted, and especially when they painted these landscapes right there on the spot. They froze their fingers and many other parts of their body uh, doing that. This was a tough job, a very tough job. But that was the only way to capture these effects. And I love the magpie on uh, the gate, which is almost like a note of music. So that's a great painting by Claude Monet called the magpie in number 12 position. And number 11 is another Monet, but done 10 years later. Now uh, you can see the difference in the brushwork. Totally different approach. Rue Montorgueil, and that was to celebrate a great, the great success of an international exhibition that took place in 1878. And it was also a way to glorify the changes that the Baron Haussmann had brought to Paris. Mm. Now, Monet did not have an apartment there. He went knocking on doors until someone let him <laughs> use their window to paint that. Imagine that you could have a photograph 